Window Display Workshop – How to Create a Visual Window Display Mockup in Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can download a photograph of a window from a store of your choice or take a picture. It's always good to have it front on like this example in front of me. How you chop out their window and create your own display mockup inside. We'll be using both Photoshop, covering the selection tools and saving with transparency as a PNG file and then Adobe Illustrator experimenting with layers, clipping masks, cropping, layering items, transparency, drop shadows, hand, hand drawing and brushes at the same time. So first you want to go on somewhere like Google Images and search for a shop front of your choice, obviously the store that you want to use. As I mentioned previously, it's best to find an image where the shop front is face on because it makes it a lot more easier to edit them. If they're at an angle, it just becomes very difficult to set things out. So find the image that you like, something front on like this, and then save the image to your desktop. So the next thing I want to do is find my shop front where I've saved it. And I just want to drag and drop that onto my Photoshop icon at the bottom. I don't want to create any new pages or anything. I literally just want that image opened up in Photoshop. If I try and start a new document and place the image on it, there'll always be a white background that I can't get rid of. So I'm literally just dragging the image onto Photoshop and it opens up like this. Before I can edit the image, I have to open it up. So you'll see there's a padlock on layers here. If you haven't got layers or anything else that I'm talking about open today, you can find them under window, go and select layers or color or whatever it might be that I'm uh, suggesting that you use. So to undo it, you literally just click on this padlock and you'll see it will disappear. Now it means it's editable. There's a few ways that I could select this window and delete it to make it transparent. The first thing, because it's quite a rectangular image, I'm gonna go and get my shape tool, select the rectangle, and literally just draw a rectangle over here very carefully, and then select delete. And then I can press Command on my keyboard and D to deselect. I'm gonna do the same on this side. So drawing a rectangle again clicking delete on my keyboard and the old fashioned way or the long way is select deselect or command D. Now you'll see at the top, there's still some parts of the window that I need to edit and take away. Now there's a few ways I can do this. There's a couple of selection tools here. There's a magic wand tool, which allows you to select different areas. And again, I could sort of press delete, but that might take a while. Or I can use this one, which is the quick selection tool, which sort of holds on to different areas. And as I move it around, you can make this area so this circle bigger and smaller using the left bracket to make it smaller to be more sort of precise or the right hand bracket on my keyboard to make it bigger and again i can just press delete and i can press command d to stop that selection to go and select other areas so just selecting more areas and you want to be careful that you don't lose bits so if you feel like you're taking on too much you can just press command d and if it feels like you're getting to a point where perhaps you can't use the selection tool anymore what I tend to do is go and get my rubber tool, the eraser tool. And again, you can make the selection bigger. Obviously, I don't want to do it there and smaller. We're using the bracket tool. I remember can't command Z undoes something. So I'm just going to start to rub out some extra bits here. Again, I can make it bigger and smaller depending on how precise I want to be. So I'm just going to take off different little bits here. Now, once I'm happy and I've got everything deleted that I don't want there, I'm going to go to file, save as, and to maintain the transparency in the background, it has to be a PNG file. So you can call it Windows Shop Front, perhaps with a B, making sure it's a PNG file and click Save. So next I want to come to Adobe Illustrator, which is the orange icon. I want to create a new page. Chances are you'll find that your shop front is landscape, so keep a landscape page and I recommend A4 to keep it unified with everything. Then I want to go and find my shop front and I literally just drag and drop it onto my Adobe Illustrator page. And I want to make sure it fits within the page. So I hold down shift and take in one of the corners that keeps it scaled and stops it from getting pixelated and just place it so it fits nicely within the screen like that. When there's a blue cross, you go to the top and click embed. Now I want the shop front to be at the front and there's nothing I'm gonna really do to the shop front. But everything that I'm going to put behind it will sit in that window, so I want it behind. So what I'm actually going to do here is create an extra layer. Um, so you can work on layers in um, Illustrator, more and more you get organised with it. But for today, we'll just create one extra layer. So if you haven't got your layers open, just like in Photoshop, you can go to Window and Find Layers and it will open. And then you can click a new layer with this icon here. You can say, see it says Create New Layer. And when I click on that, there's a new layer. Now at the moment that layer is on top of the window, so anything that I place on will cover up the window. So I'm just going to drag my layer underneath. You can now see it's underneath. 
And I'm going to lock my shop front window by clicking just here. You can see it comes up with a little padlock. I can simply unlock it later by clicking on it again. But it just means now when I'm working in layer two that it won't keep moving the window around, which makes it a lot more easier. Now, the next thing is before we leave and go and start pulling things in is we need to make sure we're working on the bottom layer. So that's selected in this blue color here. Otherwise, if I start and pull things in while I'm working on layer one where the shop front image is, it, it just won't understand, it won't allow you allow me to do that. So that's usually the first problem. So you're working in a layer that's not padlocked, that's under your shop front. So I'm gonna go and find, first of all, some sand. Now, hopefully you've been a lot more creative, come up with a trend board, mood board, um, and know exactly what you want to do. I'm kind of freestyling here. So I've got some sand, I'm going to embed it. I've just brought in that image just like I would any other image, and I've just found this on a Google image search. And while the image is selected, you can crop it up here. It just says crop image. And you'd crop like you would do in any other program. I'm gonna crop mine in there. And you press return when you're happy with it. If you need to crop it a bit more, you can always go on and do that too. Taking it in from any corner, press return when you're happy with it. The next thing I found is some wooden vintage beach hut background, sort of paint, vintage painted wood. Now again, I can zoom in and out. You can either do that with the magnifying glass or again, the shortcut command plus or command minus, which is nice and easy to use. Again, I hold down shift to take in the corner to get it the right size. I can crop it if I wish. I want to send this to back. Obviously at the moment it's covering up the sand and I'd want it placed to the back. So you can go to object, arrange, send to back, or you can use the shortcut. So for example, I can hold shift, command, and the right hand bracket to bring it forward, the left hand bracket to bring it back. It's a good shortcut. And again, once you're happy with it, click embed to get rid of that red cross. You might want to reposition things. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of transparency to this image because I find it's a bit heavy at the moment. So you can go and find your transparency in window if you haven't got it open. Mine's over here. And I'm just going to drop that down slightly just to make it a little bit softer as it will be kind of further in the window. So you can see now I've got a base. You might want to do something like Google a wooden floor. It might be that you've got a decorative tropical background, whatever it is that you desire. But they're just two images that I've Googled and now placed at the back of the window. And I'm working in layer two, which is behind this layer with my shop front. So I'm gonna try and work in order of kind of layering things up, although it's not essential. So the next thing I have is a few vintage posters that I've taken screen grabs of that I'm gonna pull into here. And I'm literally gonna place them on the background and decide where I'm going to place them. You can see because I'm working on the underlayer that they're just fitting straight in. So I can click embed, bring in another one. Again, just hold down shift and bring them in and decide where I'm going to place them. Until I've got, I've got four of them there. So they're just screen grabs or downloads from Google images and place them in there. So next I want to start building up my arrangement. So I've Googled a table. Again, it's just good to try and find a table that's straight on that, you know, when you pull it on, it'll fit within the display. You don't want anything at a weird angle so it starts to look really messy. I'm just gonna pull it into Photoshop. This one's got a nice, easy white background. So I'm just going to use the magic wand tool because it's all white. I can easily just click and then uh, it selects all of it. So before I click delete, remember I need to click on the padlock to make it editable. And I just am gonna click, uh, click delete here and then command D to deselect. Now it's quite a big arrangement, so I'm just gonna crop it in. And now I just save it as a PNG. So I now go and find this PNG, which I've cut out of the table. And again, I just drag and drop it onto my Illustrator page, click embed, hold down shift and make it the size that I desire. So now I have a table on my display. Now I actually want to put a little photo frame sitting here. So I've found another poster. Just gonna drag and drop it on. I've saved this one with the frame. Clicking embed, scaling down to the size that I want it. And to make it sort of look like it's leaning on the back, I'm gonna add a drop shadow. So making sure it's selected, go to effect, stylize, drop shadow. And I do the opacity about 30 and the other two, the X and Y offset is 0.5 and 0.5 if not, it can become too heavy. And you can see it just creates a little drop shadow there and makes it look a little bit more 3D. I've also found a picnic camper that I'm going to do the same as I did with the previous item. It's just a white background. So I'm gonna unclick the padlock, get my selection tool, the magic wand tool, select the white. Now there's some white in there. If I hold down shift, it allows me to select that too. So I'm gonna select delete, deselect, crop it down and save as a PNG. Once I've saved it as a PNG with the transparent background, I again pull it on, 
ball down shift, make it smaller and place it where I'd like it to go and click embed. So I've done the same with cropping out a deck chair and a vintage suitcase, which I've placed on there. So just Google these images and cut them out in Photoshop. So it's starting to build up the composition here. So the next thing I want to do is bring in some mannequins. Now it's quite difficult this. So what I decided to do was Google some vintage drawings of um, ladies in swimwear, some fashion illustrations. So these, I'm actually just gonna crop them out in um, Illustrator. So I place them on the page. I'm just gonna do this to the side. So I'm just gonna make this slightly smaller and embed. And there's two ways I'm gonna demonstrate doing this. The first is using the pencil tool, which is here. There's a few of them here. Make sure you use the pencil tool. Zoom in. And I'm just going to roughly sort of draw around here this first person. So drawing all the way around the outskirts until I've got a line. Then I'm going to get my selection tool. That's The line's already selected. Then I'm going to hold down shift so I get the background as well. So the background and the line that I've created. Then you can go to object, clipping mask, make or command 7 for a shortcut. And you see it just crops out into that shape. So it's a really useful tool to use for different things. And I'm just going to place her over here. And the second way I might want to do it, I've replaced the image in again. So I've got my previous one that I've cropped out. So with this second lady, I'm going to embed. And this time I might want to use the pen tool. So just make sure you've got the normal pen tool. I'm going to zoom in again a little bit. And just draw some and straight lines to eventually go around the outside, a bit like you would cutting it out if you were doing scrapbooking. So I've got the whole way around and joined up to the beginning with a little circle there that appears when I join it all up. And again, get the selection tool. Obviously the line's selected automatically because I've just been using it. Hold down shift, select the background. Object and clipping mask, make. And there we go. I've got another one that I've popped in just here. So I can resize them, reposition them as, they, as I want. Now you can see these ladies are actually covering my table. So what I can either do is send them further to the back, so by selecting everything that's sort of behind them and sending it to the back, or I can just grab the table and the things that are on it and in front of it and bring them forward, so object, arrange, bring to front. Okay, so just so that it's all kind of starting to, to layer up. So the next thing I want to bring in is some waves that I've found on Google. So again, I've just deleted out the background here and I'm going to place them onto my display. Now, I just want half of them on one side, so I'm going to click embed and actually just sort of gently sort of crop out half of them. So do that with a clipping mask, so holding down the selection that I've done and the image command 7. And then what I can do is copy and paste that. So I've got the same selection here, and then I'm going to go to object, transform, reflect, vertical, and it's flipped it over. So they're just sort of ideas at the front. What I'm gonna do is select both of them, so hold shift and select that one, and just drop the opacity down a little bit just to make them look like sort of window stickers here. I've also found this image of a seagull that I want to place on here, and I'm just gonna put him in front of the waves there just to start layering up a little bit more. So the other thing I found is these seagulls, which I want to create a few different seagulls that are hanging. So because there's a few of them, I've brought them into Photoshop, undone the padlock, got this direct selection tool, and deleted the background. And then what I want to do is crop each one out and save them as a PNG. So it might be I save that as Seagull 1. And then I can press Alt, Command and Z to go back a step, and then crop out the next one. Save that as Seagull 2, Alt, Command Z, and pick up a third one. And crop it and call that Seagull 3. So I've got these three seagulls saved here, all cropped out. They're not perfectly cropped out, but it doesn't really matter for this exercise. I'm going to bring them in, embed them all, then play around with where I might want to place them. So I've got those all placed where I'm happy with them. And then what I'm going to do is create a drop shadow on them. So just making sure I've got it 30, 0.5, it will say that if you've done it before and click OK. And I've got some nice drop shadows in them, but I want to make sure that they look like they're actually hanging from the ceiling. So I'm just going to take my pencil tool, select a grey and make sure it's an outline, and just draw some lines here. They can be a little bit wiggly. 
So it just looks like they're actually just hanging from the ceiling there. So I'm going to select each one, make the line a little bit thinner, probably about 0.5, so they look a bit more realistic. And you can just see it looks like they're hanging from the ceiling, kind of gives a nice um, idea there. Now, if you're struggling to get things that you exactly want, like maybe you want to put in a mannequin or something, you could always do something hand-drawn on a piece of paper. And similarly to like we've done with these two ladies, scan it in, bring it in and crop it out and put it on here. That's absolutely fine. You could even put some of your own handwriting in here as well. So make it as collagey as you like. The last thing, well, one of the last things I'm going to do is create some text. So I'm going to create a text box, put in new summer collection. I've changed the colour of the text also making sure the colors at the front to blue rather than black and put it here and then what I'm going to do just to make the window feel like it's actually a window I'm going to take my paintbrush tool here make sure I've got a white selected so it's just an outline for a brush it doesn't brushes don't have fills and I've gone and got some artistic brushes so I've gone to brush library here artistic and artistic charcoal ones I picked one of these and I'm just going to literally put a flash across there like that. Select the paintbrush, which you can move around with my selection tool. I'm actually going to make it a bit thicker and then add some transparency to it. And it just gives a sheen to the window like you'd imagine. It makes it just look a little bit more 3D. Now the last thing I want to do is put a sticker. So I found this graphic again just on Google Images. I've dragged and dropped it onto my Illustrator screen made it smaller holding shift. And I want it to be a circle, so I'm going to click embed, get my shape tool, select circle, and draw a circle over the image. Place it wherever I want. I can make the circle bigger and smaller with my selection tool. Click over the circle and the image, command seven or object clipping mask and make. Make it a bit smaller, and I just want this to go here so it looks like it's another sticker on the window. Again, I could add a drop shadow, stylize drop shadow. My previous settings are all saved to make sure it looks like it's at the front. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a transparency as well. And that kind of gives you an idea of a window display. Now it's up to you to be as creative as you like. Mine's not very exciting. I've had to do it very quickly. Yours will be a lot more inspired from mood boards. I could now place this into InDesign or um, a PowerPoint presentation and create some arrows and some written narrative as to maybe I'd say perhaps this suitcase would actually be open and maybe some swimwear would be falling out. Likewise with this basket, perhaps there'd be stuff coming out or things saved on here. Um, you don't have to illustrate everything. If it's in a presentation, you could also just simply talk over it. Anyway, that should give you a good idea of how to create a simple mock-up in Illustrator using Photoshop elements to create a mock-up of a window display.